So in the previous video I mentioned how I was using these open street map maps on my two Garmin units. So this is my old Garmin Street Pilot 3. So I think I bought this around 2001. And just for a comparison of technology, this was pretty much state of the art at that time. And then this was the Garmin Edge 800 bike GPS that I bought around 2010. So this is about 10 years worth of miniaturization. This was color display, built-in battery, GPS unit with mapping. And then 10 years later, you went to something like this. Pretty similar color display. This is a, actually a little bit lower resolution. So yeah, so there, there's the Street Pilot 3. And if we go around to the back side, you've got this external antenna, BNC plug there, that you can hook up. I've got a rooftop antenna in my Toyota 4Runner. You can plug in this uh, portable antenna as well. There's an audio jack for an external speaker. You've got a 4-pin power and data connector over here. And then on the bottom, there's a little slot for your memory card. And I'll show you that later here. And if we take a look here at the, the data connector, you probably can't see the little diagram there, but here's the four pins. You've got RS-232, receive and transmit there, pins one and two, pin three is ground, and then pin four is your DC power, eight to 40 volts. So this is what Garmin supplied with the unit. It was a cigarette lighter plug and an external speaker in here. And on the other end, you've got the four pin connector, just power and ground on this connector. And then there's your speaker jack and you could run your GPS and get voice navigation. So then the other thing that Garmin supplied with the GPS unit was this. It's a serial data cable. So it's got a DB9 RS-232 connector and then I've just plugged it into a USB to serial adapter that I have plugged into the laptop here and that plugs into the back of the unit. The only issue with this cable is it only has data. It doesn't have any external power. So when you use this cable, you're running the GPS off of the batteries. So this is the other thing that was supplied. This is what the memory sticks look like. They're probably pretty similar to an SD card, but they're proprietary format. They have pins on the bottom. This one is the biggest they had, 128 megabytes. I have this one and then the one that's in the unit. And then they supplied this, what they call USB data programmer. And you plug the USB cable into the back of your laptop or PC and you can slide your card in there. And then you can program the card over USB instead of over the slow serial port. So if you're doing maps, you definitely want to go this way. So the, those were the accessories that came with the Garmin Street Pilot 3. And then this is something I picked up. It's called a BT-ACC. And so what this was, it's a lighter plug. And it has also a Bluetooth transceiver in it. You plug that into the, the data connector. And this supplies power. So this talks to the GPS over the serial port and then talks to your PC or laptop over Bluetooth. Now I can't find my little Bluetooth dongle that I used to use, so I can't show you that. But just to show you how you set that up, so that, again, this was an aftermarket accessory. So to use that thing, you had to go in here to the menu you had to go to System Setup, and you had to come over here to this Interface option. So here's a, all of the options you have for the, the Serial Port Interface. And by default, it's in Garmin format, but to use the Bluetooth adapter, you had to go to this NMEA, which is kind of the industry standard GPS format. 
And once you do that, then you can use the Bluetooth adapter. Yeah, so here are, here's the maps. This whole map set takes a little over one gigabyte. The problem is the memory card in this unit is 128 megabytes. So, so what I did was I selected a portion of this map set that just fits 126.8 megabytes there to pick up this area. So I have like all the portions of Nevada, I've got the Death Valley desert area where we go off-roading a lot. I've got the southern Sierra Nevada mountains, the whole Central Valley, and then it's got all the roads between where I live and where I go out in my Forerunner when we go out exploring. So, so you have to use map source because it's the only one that lets you pick subsets of the map. So what I've done is I've got the sections of map that I want to upload It'll tell me the size, and then I can come up here and say send to device. And you can see I've actually got two options. One is USB data card programmer. That's this thing. I've also got Street Pilot 3 on COM9. Okay, yeah, so I guess the serial port, if you use Garmin format, is 115 KBOD, so you get roughly 10,000 bytes per second. So it's going to take quite a long time to send 128 megabytes at about 10,000 bytes a second. So you really want to use this USB data card programmer for maps, but that introduces one complication. You need to go to the Garmin web page and download their latest USB drivers package and you install that on your PC or laptop, but those USB drivers only work on 32-bit machines. Okay, so I've gone and pulled the memory card out of my Street Pilot 3 GPS, and I want to update these maps. The ones I have on here are a couple of years old, so I've got the map set saved so that in the future, if I need to refresh the maps, I just open the file and it's got everything selected. So I just come up here, send to device, and it takes a little bit to come up here, and I have USB data card programmer as the device name and maps selected. So I'm going to do a send. I think I'm still having a problem. I've used this before. It might be the serial port. So I'll unplug the serial port. Maybe that was what the problem is. I'm going to try this again. Let's see. Yeah, there we go. So it was apparently this serial port being plugged in was confusing it. Because now it's working. And now, yeah, now what it's doing, it's doing this building the index files. It's taking all of these individual maps here and it's putting them all into one big map file. But it's got to index everything. So I think what it's doing, it's taking all of the separate map index files, which is probably all the routing information, and combining that into one combined index file. So this takes a couple of minutes. It's, if I had a faster laptop, now I think this is actually, you know, maybe 1.6 gigahertz. It's a pretty slow laptop, single core. The bulk of the time is copying the data over this the USB port. Got about two minutes remaining, so I'll fast forward through this. Yes, I think here it's basically stepping through each of the individual maps. Now we're 100 percent complete. Now we're erasing the card and then we start transferring. Yeah, it takes about five minutes yeah. then. So you get about 25 megabytes a minute. And then it goes through verifying, which I think takes about the same amount of time. So you've got roughly five minutes to transfer the data, 
looks like about three minutes to verify the data. There's about a minute to erase the card, so that's about nine minutes total time. Like this one took about four minutes to build the map set and the index files. On a faster machine, that might take 30 seconds. So you're looking at 10 to 15 minutes, but the bulk of the time is dealing with the slow USB interface. Well, I, I don't know if this is USB 1 or 2, but I imagine these memory cards here are probably pretty slow too. This was a proprietary Garmin technology and in 2000 it was probably state-of-the-art but today with a micro SD card like when I program this thing I get 30 megabytes a second programming the micro SD card so I could program this card in about four seconds where it's taking eight minutes for the transfer and then the verify. And just to show you that the maps load here, I plugged the memory card in. And there we go, OSM Pacific Topo Maps. Yep, everything's working. This thing still works, it's still functional, it's just a little bit limited with today's maps. But if you have one of these and the only reason you're not using it is because you don't have any up-to-date maps, you can get the OSM maps, get the map source installer, you install it on your PC or laptop. It's got to be 32-bit if you want to use the data programmer. Plug that in, upload your maps. So I do have the 2008 City Navigator maps, and they're quite a bit less detailed than the Topo maps. I believe on one of these cards I can do about half of the U.S. So if I was just strictly driving on pavement, I would use this map set. So this map information for this is about 10 years old. I think I updated my City Navigator maps once or twice. I got the original set. I think I got a set in 2004 and then I guess I got the 2008 version. But after that I stopped getting updates because the maps got too big to fit on card. But yeah, if you have a, one of these older Garmin units, the, there was a whole list of these devices that all use these same memory cards. There was the Street Pilot line, they had this color map line. There was uh, quite a number of devices that all used this same memory card, the same programmer, the same interface, and they all had the same 128 megabyte limitation. So if you have one of those old GPSs and it still works and the only reason you're not using it is because you don't have any maps, this OSM map solution is pretty good. So yeah, if you have any questions about how to set this up or anything, uh, post up in the comments section down below. I'll put some of the other videos over here on the left side. And as always, thanks for watching.